Hey, Miguel, good morning. Hey, Rain, how's it going? Oh, it's going pretty well. I, uh, for a second, I thought I actually had a tech issue with my with my sound, so I was uh, checking a couple cables, but thankfully for, for we're all good. Um, I'm having a great Friday morning. Uh, I'm actually really happy here. I think uh, you're in Washington as well. We finally got some rain, which is something we desperately, desperately needed. Um, so, you know, it, it's I'm enjoying my coffee and actually, like, happy that the clouds are out right now. And, you know, we're, we're having a... Um, uh, a day where a bit of our smoke <laughs> got washed away with the with the rainfall. Yeah, finally. I mean, I've been uh, almost 14 years now in the Seattle area. I don't remember a summer as dry as this one. Uh, it had been at least without a uh, rain. Uh, I think I think that because we, we were close to breaking the record, and it was like three or four years ago that we actually had like the longest dry spell. But it, it's unfortunately been a hot, rough one. Um, I won't digress too far Tara, on that one, but I, I'm excited to have you on today. Um, you were certainly, I think, you know, you're up there with Jeffrey as kind of like, you know, one of the, the, the fathers of, of uh, Power Query and Jeff, uh, respectively, with him and, and Dax and everything. But you've been instrumental in the changes for it, you know, for, for years and years now. Um, I think our first interaction was, who oh, two? I, it's, it seems le like not that long ago, but it was like, I think three years ago when we uh, had, had the last in person MVP summit. Uh, or close to it at this point. Um, and, you know, I've had a lot of uh, interactions since then, just, you know, as part of the MVP community. But uh, for the people like tuning in, I'd love to get a, a little bit of a background about yourself and kind of your, your involvement both with uh, with Microsoft and then um, as well with the, the changes and adaptation of Power Query. Sure, absolutely. Uh, before I do that, actually, let me uh, correct one thing, which is um, I just get the pleasure to actually represent the work of a really strong team of uh, engineers, uh, developers, program managers, designers. Uh, I'm just the face of it, but I'm by no means the father of anything of <laughs> in, in this point. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's such an amazing team to work with uh, uh, across the Power Query team, uh, and the data flows team, the connectors team, and uh, just being able to represent the work that everyone does here and actually get the fun part of actually seeing how it changes and improves people's lives and their work with data. It's just uh, a really, you know, uh, pleasing part of the job. I'd say it's my favorite part of the job. But with that said, um, yeah, um, about me, I'm uh, actually originally from Spain and I moved to the, to the U.S. Uh, almost 14 years ago to work at Microsoft. Um, I started as actually as an engineer um, on the, uh, you know, preliminary project that eventually led to Power Query. Um, uh, three years into the role, I decided to actually switch gears from writing code to actually uh, talking to customers and envisioning the, the next wave of product capabilities. And I eventually switched to a program manager role. Started by owning the Power Query experiences mm -hmm. um, and eventually uh, grew into the entire Power Query stack, including the mashup engine, the connectors. And now of late, over the last few years, as you know, uh, with new initiatives like Dataflows as well. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's, yeah. As you mentioned, like it has been a very, um, it's a large team of very skilled individuals that have helped this tool evolve to what it is today, certainly, and just gone from a plugin for Excel essentially to, you know, the the one of the the paramount transformation tools in the entire Microsoft ecosystem. Yeah, the the Microsoft uh, Data Explorer for Excel. <laughs> uh, long I for, days yeah, I forgot I forgot the name from that way back in the day. That was back when like you know Power. Uh, Power BI was called Power Query, you know. Excel 2013, yeah. Power uh, BI, yeah. Yeah. Power Query as an add in Power Pivot, Power View, Power Map. <laughs> like, there, there still isn't quite anything like Power Map and Power BI. Yeah, there, there's a couple of close ones, but the I did like the export option where you could add a, a, an audio file and you could create a cool little kind of. Um, you know, a, a fun just tracking video, you, you tell it where it needs to fly over and then it does this little flyby and everything. Like, that, it was a fun way to do some, you know, demos with some, like, motivational music or other, you know, I, I'd usually use, like, inspirational video game music for it. And it, it was great for, like, a selling point. Uh, I think one of my first, like, product demos that I had on my business website back in 2013 was you use, used Power Map um, and, a, and a bunch of the little bars that would jump up and down and various things as, as the timeline went around. But it, it worked well, at least from a business perspective. Yeah, I agree. It was super fun to demo with. Mm -hmm. Someday I'm hoping, you know, like Azure Maps is getting closer with the 3D mapping capabilities. I'm, I'm hoping someday there, there's maybe another kind of like feature where you can assign a track and 
and have that play across the timeline or something, you know, on a page if you have it like presented in a lobby. It's like a you know a bucket wish list of mine. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, just checking some of the comments. I'm queuing up a couple of the questions for later. Um, but um, yeah, like I, I think there's a lot of broad topics we're going to go over today. I think the parody of Power Query certainly because it's continued to spread across various platforms. And with most things that I've seen in the BI stack online usually gets things first just because it's, it's easier to kind of roll out to a, uh, a, a web space than it is to have to do an update of an installed uh, instance on a computer, usually behind enterprise security walls of... Uh, checking for viruses and everything else. Um, but then also just kind of the, uh, some of the evolution on where it's gonna be going in terms of the integration with data flows and a lot of other stuff. And then just some of the additional, you know, kind of uh, like AI light features that are being sprinkled into it, um, where you, you can kind of just, it's really quick and easy plug and play AI models um, for predictive analysis. And also just assistance in the, you know, a lot of the by example features that have been coming out, I know are, it's, uh, I don't actually know if you'd consider it AI or not, but it, it's certainly one of those, like it's a, it's predictive features, definitely, that can look at, you know, what you do as a, as a human and, and essentially then, you know, translate that into actual code. I've, I've loved those since day one. Like I, even today, I still use columns by example, and I can hard code M, you know, with, the, with I, I'd put myself at like the upper 95 percentile, but I still use it more often than not just because it's faster than me writing the code myself for a lot of common, uh, common power query patterns, so to speak. Yeah, I completely agree. It's, uh, you know, one of my dreams is to actually make everyone successful with power query, but without actually touching the power query experience. Yeah. I know it's really a dream, but uh, <laughs> let's see how we yeah. can get to that. The only times, honestly, that I, you know, I'll, I'll just give my two cents and we can move on from it. But the uh, these days when I'm actually editing M code, most of the time now it's not really Occasionally, it's for performance optimization against like an enterprise model, uh, like a large data set. Um, but otherwise, it, it's usually involving data connectors kind of switching and wanting to do any, any kind of dynamic things uh, with those. But otherwise, it's, yeah, 99% of my stuff, um, even as a, you know, an expert developer, and it still is just using the command interface. And that keeps increasing as more and more commands and stuff get added. And like you said, the, the goal of Power Query is not to be a it's not a coding platform. It's not designed to be like primarily a coding platform. It's designed to be UI driven. And it really is getting to, to that point where, you know, there, there's that exponential curve where it'll always get close to, we'll never touch to a hundred percent, but it will get darn close to that, that point of 99.999% uh, um, of what you do is you just uh, use the interface, use a predictive um, algorithm or just click a button. Exactly. Awesome. But um, yeah, if you want, we can actually, I can flip over and then we can talk a little bit about the agenda today. All right, let's do that. Uh, I prepared a few slides mostly so I don't look like I came uh, completely <laughs> unprepared for this session, but uh, it definitely is more of a conversation. I don't want this to be a presentation at all, but I there are a few topics uh, just to structure the discussion. First of all, I wanted to talk a little bit more about what Power Query is, how does it help and kind of lay the the main, uh, you know, the main areas and maybe main pieces there, so we're all on the same page. And then we need to do a bunch of deep dive demos, including things like some of the newly released features, and also talk a little bit about what's coming up next. Uh, and uh, then where you can go and actually learn more. Uh, we've been uh, investing quite a bit on uh, community and documentation resources that I wanted to walk you all through. Perfect. So with that, I'll talk a little bit more about what Power Query is. And really, you know, Power Query's uh, mission is to help bring the world's data into, you know, whichever uh, workload you use in Power Query within, right? Uh, whether it is Power BI or Excel or the, the Power Platform to actually, you know, create um, data-driven applications on top of it, or uh, maybe you are trying to extract some insights from, from data in Dynamics 65. That's all that Power Query helps you with. And the world's data can be in many different places. The world's data can be in files, um, files and data lakes as well, uh, and folders, uh, when you're not only connecting to a single file, but to many different files that actually are uh, homogeneous, and you actually need to just con combine them together into a single logical table. The classic example would be like daily logs or mo monthly logs uh, for something, and you just wanna continue unioning that data over time. Um, a few more places, of course, the classic relational Databases, things like SQL Server, uh, Oracle, you know, Teradata, SAP sources, um, you know, you know the drill in this category. And uh, with you know the the I think that the revolution over the last few years have been all around 
cloud data warehouses, things like Azure Synapse Analytics, what used to be Azure SQL Data Warehouse, um, Snowflake, Google BigQuery, uh, and also, you know, um, Cube data sources, like all app sources, which they always have a place. Um, continue growing up the size of your data. Talk about even bigger data volumes with things like Hadoop and Hive and Spark and Databricks and, and many others. Um, and then everything else, right? From a web page to a web API, a REST API, uh, all data feed, uh, you know, just uh, data coming from another cloud, like maybe the Salesforce cloud or maybe Adobe Analytics or Google Analytics, um, ODBC drivers connecting to who knows where, right? Um, and many, many more sources. So the, the value prop of Power Query is to actually give you the same set of connectivity and data transformation capabilities on top of all of, it, all of these data sources. But you know, each of these data sources is completely different in terms of how to connect to them, what are the query interfaces, uh, query languages that they support. Uh, do they even have the ability to, to run queries or are they just you know, data storage layers without a compute? Um, the Power Query connectors, and I like to use this chart to kind of indicate that they actually modulate the frequency and actually fix the impedance mismatch between uh, all of these data sources to just provide that uniform experience on top. And that includes things like how to connect to that source, what type of authentication methods it supports, username, password, Active Directory, you know, OAuth, um, anonymous access, uh, you know, whatever it is. Difference in data types, like how do you map uh, a daytime data type from a SQL database to a daytime uh, from from another source, right, from a cube source, or you know, across different database vendors, uh, you know, and how you provide that uniform layer of data types um, that Power Query provides through the mashup engine. Uh, so this is what connectors are all about, normalizing all of that data into a common representation. So, that, so then we can do things like, you know, giving you that get data experience to connect to each of those data sources with the right set of options, server, uh, server names, database names, additional options like maybe timeouts, native database queries like, you know, SQL queries if you already have them, um, additional options uh, on top of that as well, uh, depending on the data source you're connecting to, and then authentication. Um, and once you've established that connection, it's all about exploring data, finding the right tables to use uh, by virtue of actually previewing the data. If you were connecting to a cube data source, we even give you an experience to select specific dimensions, measures, hierarchies, input variables uh, for parameterized views, you know, um, everything that's needed in order for you to specify the right places to connect to and the right objects to pick from that uh, specific data source. And once you've uh, brought your uh, rectangular shapes of data, uh, that's where the Power Query Editor comes into play with over 300 data transformations, including things like filters, replacing values, mm -hmm. joins, unions, you know, uh, you name it. Uh, and uh, again, the key here is that is uh, data transformation done on top of a sample of the data, uh, usually the top 200, top, uh, top 1,000 rows, that gives you enough of an understanding of the data shape and the data characteristics, even with things like data profiling and others, so that you apply the right transformations to that subset mm -hmm. uh, that eventually runs over the entire data set once you complete uh, your, your design time experience. Exactly. And I, and I, and I like the, the idea, and I think you, you mentioned it as well. Um, and actually, Peter Myers was one of the people who helped kind of hit the idea onto me because he, he's very good about making sure that you call the, the right things the appropriate names. It, it's very important. Terminology is very important. I, you know, probably the number one perpetrator is dashboards. You know, as, that's a whole side of mm -hmm. other conversation. But in Power Query, like a lot, I used to call those you know, what you see in front of you a table. And it does load to a table, but it, it's, a, it's a preview. It is something that is technically a query until it loads to that. But you really have, you, know, you have the, whatever it is, the entity, you have the, uh, the query, that you that you transform and then the final load process, but and to the people tuning in too, I've I've actually um, had to explain to customers a lot who, you know, they ask like, have you connected to this source? Well, no, I haven't. Oh, I don't know if you can do this job. Then there's like 180 connectors in Power Query. It honestly, at the end of the day, they all get trans they, they they all get brought in to basically a query that is that looks and smells like a table that gets loaded to a table, and there's only a couple dozen, you know dozens of patterns really of transformations that you have to do. And like the amount of effort that it does to connect to the source and get the, the entities that you will, uh, and data that you want to pull in is, is a drop in the bucket of the, uh, the entire development process. And that, I think that's what a lot of people don't necessarily realize is they think you have to be an expert in X data source where at the end of the day, it's, it still gets loaded to a table. And, you know, and more than likely you will have similar uh, transformation patterns that need to be applied to that that are applied to like a hundred different queries or a hundred different data sources, you know, because it, it's, it, 
a very common denominator when it comes to the, the, the standard pay points of data transformation and what needs to be done using this. So it's a great Rosetta Stone in that sense that it, it really can connect to anything, but then by the time you actually get to the development in Power Query, it, it's, a, it's a pretty core set of um, transformations you'll need to do regardless of your data source. That's right. And at the same time, uh, you know, it's it's still very hard and challenging. They, they say, you know, uh, people spend 80% of their time doing data preparation before you actually yeah. get downstream in the workload. I, and I, I like, like the, to say... Uh, the, it's that, um, the, the iceberg, right? There's the tip, which is the report that the customers see, and then there's the large portion, which is data data prep. That's all below it. Yeah, 80% they spend on data prep. The other 20% they complain about how hard data prep was. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 0.1% on uh, um, building the report page. Yeah. All right. Uh, so yeah, just uh, just to close on this uh, diagram, uh, just to summarize, actually, we integrate Power Query in many different uh, products today. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about each of those. Um, uh, Ray, as you were saying, we have over 155 data connectors in Power Query. That includes a number that are actually built by our team, Microsoft. Um, and then we also have a connect extensibility platform. I don't know how many of you have seen that, but we provide the Power Query Connectors SDK that allows anyone to build a new M-based or Power Query-based connector and just seamlessly plug it into uh, whether it is Power BI Desktop or uh, you know Power BI Online through things like the on-premises data gateway. Um, and uh, now out of the people building those connectors, thousands of them, um, there is, of course, the ISVs uh, who own the specific data source backends, for example, uh, from my slide, take the uh, Dinodo or Databricks. They actually built a connector themselves using the Power Query SDK and then worked with our team through our certification program. Um, they qualify for that because they own the end-to-end -end data source backend and the connector itself. Uh, and um, we actually ship those connectors out of the box. So you go uh, I scroll through the, uh, the Get Data Dialog in Power BI Desktop and you see those 155 connectors and they're seamlessly integrated. You don't realize about half of those are actually built and maintained by third-party uh, developers and uh, development companies uh, that own the underlying data sources, but that's a reality. And then on top of that, you know, any of you can create a connector. Um, uh, I've seen many patterns where, particularly for larger organizations, but you know, um, you want to uh, encapsulate the complexity of connecting to an underlying data mart, to an underlying web service, uh, to an underlying database, and just wrap up all the, the connection details behind the custom connector and just deploy that to all of your uh, business users. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we see thousands and thousands of those connectors every month being used. I had a, uh, just one quick question. I, and I think um, maybe you, you could just answer uh, briefly because there's a couple of other ones that I'll save for later that are longer, but I, and I'll pop this onto the screen. Uh, when can you expect query folding for data flow, flows in the desktop of the service? And I, I thought in with premium that that is something available now today when it's when the premium stores data flows in a, with a SQL server, a SQL instance layer that that allows query folding against that. But that's only available. I can I, I know it's at least in premium capacity. I don't know if it's in PPU, but uh, in, you, I'm sure can elaborate. Yeah, that's that's a great question. So um, y yeah, so. Um... To answer, um, let me step back first. Um, with data flows, you can actually prepare entities and then uh, provide reusability of those entities to many users, um, for example, to create downstream data sets and reports. Um, uh, as as Ray said, uh, when you're using uh, Power BI Premium, um, and that includes also premium per user, okay. um, you have a SQL compute engine uh, powering those entities mm -hmm. so that when you connect to them uh, from, let's say, Power BI Desktop, you get uh, capabilities like direct query, um, capabilities like query folding as well, uh, but it was actually um, relatively limited. Uh, over the last few months, we've actually been enhancing the data flows connector, uh, and you're going to see actually it was either in the July or August release uh, coming up soon. You're going to see a much more improved data flows connector that supports things like you know additional query push down capabilities, and that you know grows very quickly into things like incremental refresh and everything as you want to do for the system. In addition to the direct query, um, with with data flows, we actually uh, have two connectors uh, in Power BI Desktop today. You'd see a connector called Power BI Data Flows that's specific to the data flows you author in Power BI. And the second connector that is called the Power Platform Data Flows that includes data flows you've created across multiple products, and that includes Power BI, includes uh, Power Apps, includes Dynamics. 
um, we are not only improving the capabilities to do query push down uh, um, to, to the SQL engine when available, but we're also reconciling these two connectors. So it'll just be a one single data flows connector going forward. And also uh, many of you have asked this and I'm, I'm super excited that over the next few months, we're also lighting up that single data flows connector inside of Excel, Power Query in Excel. Okay, perfect. Um, that, that will open up many more scenarios for all of you. And of course, within Excel, it's import only capabilities. There's no direct query in Excel, but all of the push down capabilities, if you are connecting to a data flows in a premium workspace, should be uh, available there. And just, uh, I have one other question to follow up on that because it's perfectly segues. As you mentioned, the expanding capabilities of data flows. Um, what question you is just, could you, if you turn, turn that on your speakers just a little bit, I'm getting a teeny bit of feedback. Okay. And otherwise I'll pop up Send this me. question and read that while you do this. So let's see, Send, um, Fernando, yeah, again, just to roll off the, the data flows question, um, why does the Power Platform data flows today uh, not connect to the Dataverse tables? That's a great question. Um, you can think about data flows as um, pipelines that move data from uh, one or multiple sources to a single destination. Uh, and in between, do the Power Query magic with data transformations and joins and everything. Um, we have two main types of data flows, actually three <laughs> now. Um, uh, depending on the place that they output data to. Uh, what we call analytical data flows are all about outputting data to Azure Data Lake Storage. Uh, and analytical data flows can be authored today from either uh, Power BI or uh, Power Apps. Um, those are the, 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 the data flows that you're able to consume using the uh, what today is see the, as the data flows connector uh, inside of Power BI or the Power Platform data flows uh, connector. Um, data flows that output data into Dataverse can only be authored today from within Power Apps, um, and uh, you use the Dataverse connector to consume those. Perfect. Uh, in the future, we are we're we're thinking about further consolidation and unification of connectors to just have one. Um, but that's that was quite a bit to uh, to bite for now. That's uh, I, I appreciate the answer to that. And I think what I'll, I'll do is uh, I'll save the rest for the end because there's some broader questions. Um, but otherwise, thank you for answering those two. I think that was very helpful. No, get good. rid of that. Totally. And uh, we have a few more uh, slides and demos about data flows. I'm, I'm yeah. happy to see the questions that this is top of mind. Before we do that, let me actually give you a little bit more of a 360 degree view of all the places where you can find Power Query today. Um, we have Power Query. Uh, I like to say we not only build Power Query, but we've built Power Query twice. We built Power Query in the desktop, and uh, over the last few years, we built Power Query fully web-based, uh, what we call Power Query Online. Uh, Power Query Desktop is integrated today uh, with Excel on Windows environment, Win32 environments, um, and also with Power BI Desktop, as you all know. Um, Power Query Online is integrated in all the other places that you see in the screen here, and that includes um, the nascent, uh, well, not nascent, uh, but uh, recently added uh, Excel Mac integration for Power Query, uh, and that today includes the ability to refresh queries against certain data sources. We uh, very recently, over the last couple of months, introduced the ability to get data from files inside of Excel Mac. Um, we are working towards full query editor capabilities in Excel Mac. Uh, in the future, we'll light up additional capabilities on Excel Online as well. Uh, on the Power BI world, uh, as you all know, uh, data flows available within powerbi.com, and we'll do a couple demos about that. Um, maybe some of you have also tried the, the new quick create capabilities uh, within the powerbi.com that allow you to just point at a data source and then you automatically get a report out of a box. The get data part of that uh, is, is actually powered by Power Query Online as well. Um, and today that includes only um, uh, ability to provide blank tables, but we're growing with additional data sources like Excel and text CSV files and uh, data bearers and a few others over the next few months as well. Um, on the Power Apps front, we talked about data flows and that includes two main integration surfaces. One is what we call the maker portal. This is just powerapps.com. Um, and then the, the newly introduced Teams Power Apps integration, um, which uh, today we've released data flows uh, within Teams uh, on the web and very soon we'll release within te uh, Teams in desktop uh, as you use the Power Apps uh, integration for Teams. Uh, and then we also have some capabilities for admins over there. The Power Automate, what used to be Flow uh, side of the wall, uh, we have Power Query integrated actually in a couple of ways. One is if you're using a SQL connector and that includes SQL Server on-prem and also Azure SQL database, 
you have an action that is called transform data using Power Query, and that allows you to get at the query editor experience within Power Automate to actually transform and reshape data from a, a specific SQL uh, data source. The second one, which I didn't actually call out here, is a uh, data flows connector within Power Automate that gives you a lot of actions and triggers that allow you to automate and orchestrate a bunch of data flow capabilities. For example, uh, you have actions like trigger refresh of a data flow. Uh, you also have triggers like when a data flow uh, refresh completed, and then you can chain you know, all of those data flow specific actions in the connector, actions and triggers, with the other 300 plus, almost 400 connectors in Power Automate. So really, the amount of possibilities is limitless. You can do things like, well, you know, ref a trigger refresh of this data flow uh, whenever a new row shows up in uh, in this Salesforce database, because my data flow depends on Salesforce. And then when the data flow refresh completes, I don't know, I'll turn up the, the temperature on my Nest thermostat at home, uh, just because it's hot, uh, uh, just as a silly example. But of course, you can use the email connector and uh, you can use many, many others, right? Uh, and really, the, the opportunities, the opportunities there are um, uh, in almost infinite, and we have a bunch of uh, out of the box templates uh, you'll find through our documentation as well for for the Power Automate connector for data flows. Um, we have an integration with a bunch of Dynamics 365 applications, Customer Insights, Supply Chain, a few more, uh, and then on the Azure side, you've probably uh, heard about the Power Query activity uh, within Wrangling Data Flows in Azure Data Factory, which allows users to transform data using the Power Query Editor experience um, that generates M code. And behind the scenes, we translate that to Spark so you can actually scale it out through the Azure Data Factory infrastructure. Uh, we also recently, over the last month, month and a half, introduced uh, a new integration of Power Query within Azure Search. So it allows you to build uh, cognitive indexes within the Azure Search uh, service. Um, and with SQL Server, a couple of integrations with the on-prem um, one is the uh, SQL Server Integration Services integration, which now provides a Power Query source where you can paste your M code and actually run it within your SSIS pipelines. And the second one is just to allow you to model analysis services tabular models using the SQL Server data tools. Um, so using Power Query, you can actually ingest data into AS tabular models. I'll pause here. I know I've talked a lot. Uh, not sure if there are any questions related to any of these product integrations, right? Yeah, I'm looking around. There, there was uh, a couple related to connectors and other stuff, but nothing specifically to where I can use Power Query. But I'll say at least for my two senses, like it, I think a lot of people don't necessarily realize the number of of unique locations you can actually uh, utilize Power Query. And like, I, I, I think it's not far to, to sit, remove to say that like it, it's slowly becoming like the the de facto transformation tool for for SQL. Um, you know, uh, even like, you know, now in uh, SSIS to be able to do that as a Power Query source. So like it, it just drastically improves any transformations of basically being able to, to spit out a table and just, you know, whether or not it's tabular, compressed or uncompressed in, in SQL or Azure. So I'm, I'm happy to continually see it in all those locations. And it also means that, you know, you learn one code language and it can be uh, utilized in uh, pretty much anywhere in the Microsoft stack. Exactly. Really think about Power Query as the, you know, the standardized and uniform way to get and transform data across, Power, uh, you know, Microsoft products in general, and particularly for those uh, low code, no code experiences that empower citizen and business users. Um, when I was a kid, I, I used to love the uh, Where is Waldo books. Now we should maybe do the Where is Power Query books. <laughs> right. <laughs> That'd be great. Just have like a one page infographic of Where is Power Query. And also, like, like exactly. the, yeah, like just, just, Follow, follow the path and the journey. Um, but yeah, that, that's great. Sounds good. So switching gears a little bit, let's talk a bit more about data flows. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were a couple of questions that came up organically through the chat and that, but I'll just expand. So basically, as we said, data flows is a way for you to create uh, really ETL pipelines to move data from one place to another with transformations along the way. Um, today, you can author data flows from three main products, Power BI, Power Apps, and Customer Insights. You use the Power Query experiences within each of those uh, to define that data flow uh, code, which is nothing but a bunch of Power Query queries um, that you can then run on a schedule and orchestrate with things like the, the Power Automate connector that we were talking about. But ultimately, you can output the result of your data flows for each of your data flow queries, which become tables or entities, uh, whichever term you prefer, within your destination. Um, and uh, we provide 
uh, really three main destinations today, Dataverse, um, uh, which we we're talking about earlier. This is what uh, we expose today within the Power Apps data flows offering experience, what we call standard data flows. Uh, and then uh, we also provide Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. This is what we call analytical data flows. Um, these are also available within the, the Power App side of the house and within the customer insights experiences. Um, on, on Power BI, the only uh, available experience is to actually create these analytical data flows. It's Power BI is an analytic solution. Uh, and that's why it doesn't even ask you. But really, there, your choices are you just uh, use the default configuration, which is a, a Power BI out of the box um, data lake storage behind the scenes. Uh, or you can actually bring your own uh, storage and there's configurability options within the Power BI workspace experiences to actually attach your own Azure Data Lake storage uh, subscription so that it actually uh, you know, fits data into your existing data lake. And now that you've actually brought the data in, of course, the ultimate goal is to actually consume the data from many different places. Data flows are all about standardizing on the, you know, some wrangled data together done by the people who know how the data relates to each other, which in most cases is actually the business users who actually own the data and own the semantics of that data. Um, IT, of course, plays a crucial role in actually orchestrating and optimizing and monitoring and govern those things. But you really need to empower the, the, you know, the, the citizen user, the business user, to be able to actually define those, uh, those transformations and those data flows. Uh, in order to consume this data, then you could use uh, depending on where the data was loaded, uh, Dataverse or uh, Azure Data Lake Storage, you can use different different mechanisms. Uh, you can use the two connectors that we provide today for Dataverse and data flows, um, which today ship across Power BI, Power Automate, Power Apps, and Customer Insights. Um, when you actually use um, Azure Data Lake Storage uh, CDM folders as the output of your data flows, you can also just get directly at these CDM folders data, which is uh, uh, you know, a self-described uh, uh, model um, with, with, you know, based on JSON, based on JSON definitions, model.json, uh, it's what describes what a CDM folder contains, along with a CSV file for each of the entities with the data. And you can uh, use a CDM SDK to actually get at this data from lots of uh, different services, including things like Data Factory, Databricks, um, Synapse, uh, machine learning, and uh, of course, third parties as well. So hopefully this, this helps a little bit clarifying some of the data flow, data verse questions as well. All right, well, I had two come up um, since then. There was one from the last one that I wanted to bring up. Uh, Donald had a great question mm -hmm. here. Uh, just can you see professional ETL devs using Power Query instead of Databricks? That's a great question. And uh, I'm not a professional ETL developer, so okay. I think, uh, you know, I'm not the first person to answer that. But Fair. the one thing I'll say is, look, um, even if you are a person with advanced skill sets and capabilities, it doesn't mean that you would refuse to use the simple to use tools uh, if you have them available to you, right? Um, just because I know how to cook doesn't mean I cannot go out for dinner. Um, that kind of uh, <laughs> feeling, right? make you more uh, productive maybe in many ways uh -huh. as well, right? By making it simpler, you can move faster and get at the harder parts of the job uh, quicker. Uh, so yeah, I think to answer the question, I would say I, I, I strongly believe that if we make the experiences simple, even when an advanced user can do more advanced things, they'll actually end up using the easy things uh, because they'll make them more productive. Exactly. And I had one other as well um, on data flows and Fernando. Yeah. You already called it out. If you say you can't answer with it, it depends. It, unfortunately, it, it does depend. Um, whether or not you should create your entity first before bringing it into data flows or in data flows depends on where the, it's going to be used. If, um, if the only things that are going to consume this transform table is in the Power BI tenant, like other models, um, other data flows, et cetera, probably just create you know, and do other transformations than the data flow. If there is going to be a, like in SQL, uh, that that transformed view or whatever you're connecting to is going to be used in other locations besides Power BI. You probably want to create it, um, you know, in a different part of the stream to be able to then let other things connect. So it really depends on where this is going to be used and the limitation of how focused versus broad is this transformed data going to be accessed. Exactly, the reusability is a big, big aspect. The mm -hmm. second aspect I would also call out, particularly if you're using. Um, uh, data flows in combination with compute, as we said, the SQL compute mm -hmm. um, within, uh, within Power BI Premium, is the fact that uh, if, if you're connecting to a slow data source, if you're connecting to a data source that does not give you that compute, um, 
you may actually be able to benefit from the SQL compute by first ingesting your data through a data flow into that compute and then actually consuming that. So even if you are just using, uh, you know, from a few number of uh, places, like the reusability is not that big, but the computation capabilities are also worth exploring. Exactly. The, the nice thing is that, uh, you know, this is easier said than done, right? But because it's the same underlying mashup engine, the same underlying M code, uh, even, you know, majority of the experience is the same, although we'll talk a little bit more about the discrepancies in a little bit. Uh, you can simply copy paste your queries from desktop to online and from online to desktop. And uh, the, the default answer is that they should work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the only two that I, that I had related to this, but both really good ones, definitely. Sounds good. So I think uh, we have enough talking, at least for my standards. Uh, why don't we go and actually play with the product a little bit? Let me alt up here. Now, what you have uh, here on my screen, uh, hopefully you see uh, Power BI now. I'm actually in one of my demo workspaces. If you're getting started with data flows in Power BI now, uh, one important thing to know is that Data flows are not available within your my workspace because you know really data flows are meant for collaboration. So uh, make sure you're actually in a data in a, in a workspace that is not your uh, your own workspace. Uh, and one, once you are in one of those uh, workspaces, if you go to the uh, to the new menu, you're gonna get a drop down with all of the objects that you can create. One of them being a data flow. So let's actually go and create our data flow. The first thing I can do here is either, you know, define net new tables uh, connecting to any of the external data sources uh, through our Power Query connectors, or I can maybe just link to tables from other data flows. Uh, as we said, data flows are all about reusability, and that also implies that a data flow could actually reuse data from another data flow. And that's where uh, both the compute engine, but also our out of the box orchestration capabilities are, come really handy because we'll take care of refreshing the right data flows and the right entities at the right time. For example, if you create a data flow that actually brings your list of customers as an entity, and then somebody else creates a second data flow that maybe does a prediction on the customer churn and calculates the top customers most likely to churn, um, that depends on the original customer's entity. We will make sure that whenever the customer's entity in the original data flow gets refreshed, we will automatically refresh the downstream customers most likely to churn uh, entity in the other data flow so that we keep data consistent, we keep data fresh everywhere without you having to go and configure any crazy uh, ETL pipelines. You know, uh, It's all about democratizing this for the, uh, for the non-technical users. So with that uh, little spiel, um, the other two ways of actually bringing data in is either to import a model definition or to actually attach a common data model folder that you might have created with another, another tool, as we were saying earlier. Um, I'm actually going, uh, going to go into the uh, add new tables, which is going to bring me into the uh, Power Query Online experience. Uh, and it's going to present me with a list of the uh, connectors on the Get Data screen. Um, and uh, for this demo, I'm actually going to connect to a couple of data sources. I'm going to try and build something similar to what I was mentioning now. I'm going to bring some data about customers and orders and sales. And then I'm going to um, calculate what are our top paying customers, uh, incorporating data from a bunch of uh, different data sources and tables. So the first uh, data source that I'm going to connect to is an Azure SQL database. I'll just pick the connector in there. And uh, I already had in my clipboard my uh, database path, uh, my username. Uh, I think I have it saved here as well. Note how you can also specify advanced options here, like, just like you would expect from Power Query in the desktop, things like SQL statements and command timeouts and all that. So I'll just click Next. And now, you know, the, the classic uh, task here is to actually just explore data. Um, in this Azure SQL database, I have a couple of uh, DBs. I have AventureWorks, and I can expand AventureWorks, and that's going to actually give me the list of tables available to me. Um, I'm going to use both the sales order detail as well as the sales order header tables. And uh, for some reason, the performance is not good. I think it has to do something with my screen sharing. So I'm going to try and uh, slow down a little bit as I speak. Uh, so There's the rule for any time you, you present is it doesn't matter what it is, browser or otherwise, like cut off 25% of the speed. And then you always have to apologize. Like, I promise when you do it, it's going to be faster. It's just slow when I'm screen sharing. Got it. 
<laughs> so I picked two tables and now um, we're bringing those two tables into the uh, the Power Query editor experience, which you're all familiar with. Um, what I'm going to do first is actually use the sales order detail table that you see here. Uh, we have a bunch of columns. I don't need all of them. I only need the order ID, the order quantity, and the unit price. So I'm going to select those three columns and right click and just remove the other columns. And now that we have the uh, order quantity and the unit price, I actually need to calculate the line total. So each of these rows is actually a different line within the orders. I have multiple lines per order. So I'll just select those two and go add a column. Uh, and I can go to the standard drop down and say, uh, actually, it's not adding, right? Uh, sorry, I'm slow. Um, it's a multiplication. So let me remove that step. So I remove the addition and just select the uh, unit price and quantity and apply again my multiplication. All right, so now we have the uh, the line total um, with that uh, multiplication column, but I really need to do a group by order ID so that I actually calculate the uh, total uh, for each of the orders. And uh, here within group by, I can also, I can say my column is order total and the operation is going to be a sum of the uh, multiplication one that I created. Uh, and I'll just click OK. And that's going to just give me that group by. Now I'm going to move to the second table that we brought in, which was the sales header, sales order header. And within that one, uh, again, we have a bunch of columns here that I actually don't need. If you look at the status bar at the bottom, you see the, the column count and the row count. Mm -hmm. We have about 26 columns. Uh, and I actually want to narrow that down. I'm going to actually switch here using the bottom right corner uh, to show the schema view. This is actually a newly introduced feature in Power Query Online over the last few months that gives me the ability to uh, just uh, get a better sense for the schema information for each of my tables. Um, we also have a tab in the ribbon uh, called the schema tools that lights up when uh, when you are in this mode that actually gives you uh, the list of all the columns and the schema information like column types, whether they're keys, and uh, also gives me the ability to apply operations. Um, I can also search for a specific column names. Like in this case, I'm actually only going to use this table as a bridge between order details and then another table I'm going to bring in with customers info. So I only need a couple of columns from this table. I need my sales order ID and then my customer ID. I'm going to select those two and then I'm going to remove the other columns. And now that I've done that, uh, I can also just close the schema view from the ribbon and go back to the classic uh, table data preview. Uh, now, the next thing I want to do is actually merge queries. And uh, I'm going to do a merge query as new. And I'm going to merge my uh, sales order header with the sales order detail. I'm going to use the sales order ID from both. And uh, we got all uh, exact matches as we would expect. Um, we could have used a uh, fuzzy merge within this experience as well, if we, if we need to do non-exact match. Um, and that's going to give me the additional information from the other table. As usual, I get my uh, nested tables here, which I can expand. I'm just going to use the order total. Uh, and now I have order total next to each of the lines of order. Um, the last thing I want to do on this table now is actually group by customer ID because ultimately we're going to calculate the total sales by customer. I'm going to do a group by here, and this is going to be just total sales. And again, we'll do the sum of the column that we just brought in with all the total. All right, and now that we have our total sales, um, again, we have two tables. We already brought in my total sales by customer. Now I need to bring in my table with customer's data, uh, which happens to be actually in an Excel file. So I'm just going to go use the, uh, the get data drop down here, and I'm going to go use the shortcut for Excel workbook. Um, something that many of you probably uh, struggle with, I used to as well, which is, hey, how do I easily bring uh, Excel files from OneDrive uh, into Power Query? Um, we've added a new capability called the Browse OneDrive Experience, uh, where instead of actually in the file by URL, be able to sign my OneDrive account um, and then be able to browse files available to me. 
So I'm going to use my at Microsoft.com uh, credentials, and that's going to bring me into this uh, browse dialog that allows me to just see mm -hmm. everything that's available to me in my OneDrive document library. Uh, and also things like, you know, recently added files, recently accessed files. Uh, in the future, we also plan to extend this so that you can also browse SharePoint sites that you have access to, like your team SharePoint site, not only your own OneDrive library. But this already provides a pretty good experience to actually find my uh, demos folder in my OneDrive library and then uh, find the Excel file that I want, which is the second file with customers and, you know, all the uh, now, metadata I'll, associated I'll have, with I'll have a question about file. this. Like, um... Well, in 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 desktop, uh, the 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 file browsing experience is great. There's there there is actually a way to change the how the content library is structured if you connect to SharePoint. But like the the typical initial thing is it just dumps every single file that's in there, and you have a long list, and then you have to filter. It's it's not super UI intuitive. Um, just being able to navigate via file tree is actually lovely um, in the service. And um, is this something that's eventually coming into desktop or? Yeah, so that actually uh, brings me to uh, something I wanted to cover towards the end of the demo, but I can say it now before all of you are craving for it. Uh, one of our main goals for the fiscal year 22, for the next uh, 10 to 12 months, mm -hmm. is actually bring all of the Power Query online capabilities into Power mm -hmm. Query Desktop. And it's not a capability by capability implementation. It's actually a full replacement of the existing Power Query Desktop experiences inside of Excel and Power BI Desktop with what you see uh, in Power Query Online. That includes the new get data experience that you see here, mm -hmm. the browse files experiences, the schema view. I'm going to show you a few other new features. It's <laughs> it's uh, all in type of movement. So it's uh, while I cannot give you specific timelines, it's one of our key priorities for the next year. Uh, and we're you know uh, deeply aware of the the, the angst. I would say almost uh, to get your hands onto these features. Um, so it's it's something we're definitely putting a, a lot of priority and urgency around. With that, I'm just going to click next. Here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, it just, yeah and, and, and as you go through this, just one quick mission um, from uh, Rashitha. If at any point as you're going through this stuff, is there, uh, might there ever be any step of like, if something breaks, you know, what's a good, what's a good way to debug um, as you're doing these transformations, just as a mention? Got it. Yeah, let's put a pin, uh, put a pin on that question. I'll come back to it uh, with a part of my demo. Perfect. And, uh, and it will not be a full answer, but it's something that should be pretty helpful. Perfect. All right, so in this case, I'm going to pick my customer table uh, from this Excel file and just land that one. All right, so now we've brought in a few tables. Um, another uh, feature we introduced a few months ago into Power Query Online is a new diagrammatic view, what we call the diagram view, to give you a good representation of all of your queries and their uh, dependencies, as well as information about the steps within each of those queries. You can turn on that view from the View tab you have the diagram view option. When you turn that on, in this case, you see all the queries that I brought in. So I started with the two tables from my database, uh, order detail and order header, and then I did a merge. Uh, you even get things like, you know, the, the join kind here being the left outer join. You get that Venn diagram icon. You get the inner steps within each of these query accounts. You see the dependencies. We also brought in customer here. Uh, and within customer, I can expand and see all the steps that were automatically applied as well. I could apply new steps on the diagram view. So for example, let's say I want to do a merge operation um, between the, uh, the previous result of our join um, with the new customer table. And I'm actually going to use, going to start it from customer, uh, really. So I'm going to actually click on the ellipsis here, here on the table, and I'm going to go and do a uh, merge queries as new. And I'm going to use customer and also uh, merge. And I'll use customer ID from both sides. In this case, I'm actually going to do an inner join. And you see that I get a message here asking me to enable combination of data. This is because I actually didn't specify privacy levels. Uh, we are actually missing a feature that exists in desktop today, which is you can actually specify the privacy levels information as you do a merge. Uh, we're working on that one. In the meantime, just for demo sake, I'm just going to click continue here, which effectively disables my privacy levels protection in this data flow. Uh, and that's going to give me now the result with my, my merge column. And I can now just expand total sales. Again, I can interact indistinctively through the diagram view or through the, uh, through the table preview or through the ribbon to apply operations. Um, I like to think about the diagram view as another pane within the Power Query experience. So much like you have the queries pane on the left and the query settings pane on the right, the queries pane gives you all the queries. The query settings pane gives you the apply the steps, right? 
the diagram view kind of brings the two together. So you see both queries uh, and also see the steps within each of those queries. But it gives you two things that we you didn't have in isolation. One is you get an easy way to see the relationships or the dependencies between these queries, as you can see now in the diagram view with uh, this relatively complex demo I've built in a few minutes. Um, and, uh, and, and secondly, it also allows you to see at a glance all the steps for all of your queries, instead of having to click query by query to see the apply the steps and the preview refresh for all of them. So it's a really great tool for auditing and almost like, you know, exploring your uh, your existing data flows. Maybe you are reviewing a data flow created by somebody else. Uh, that, that would also be very helpful here. And in order to do that, we've, we've added a bunch of features um, here to the, to the diagram view. So it's not only about the step names and icons, but you can also mouse over them and get to see uh, more information about the directly reference query, the indirect or transitively reference queries, like in this case, the two uh, source tables with all the detail and other header, which are not directly referenced by merge one, but they're transitively referenced by virtue of going through uh, merge. Um, you can also do a uh, bunch more things, like of course, you know, edit the steps uh, from here. Uh, so you can also uh, click the dot 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 menu for each of these steps and every operation that you used to see on, uh, on, or you still see on the apply the steps pane, like when you right click on a step, they're all available here. You can move the steps up and down. We had to change that uh, that naming actually because now you're no longer moving a step up or down. You're moving in left and right. So we settled oh, yeah. with moving in before and moving in after, so that we can actually name the feature the same way in both places. Um, That's fair. And just like that, you know, you have full interactivity. Let me actually do a couple more transforms on the uh, merge one table. Um, you notice this little plus button here. Uh, this plus button allows you to apply operations from uh, directly from within the diagram view as well. And these operations are actually contextual to the selected columns in the data preview. So now, if I were to do a sort uh, operation, it's going to sort by customer ID, which is not really what I want. Let me first do something else, which is select the total sales column. So now I can actually go and do uh, again to the sort uh, to the to the plus menu and do a sort operation. So I'm going to do a sort with sending. And you see how the new step got added there. Uh, we sorted rows. And now this, this has been sorted, as you can see, with the dropdown. And I can do other things that, of course, they're not uh, you know, bound to the specific context of a column. So for example, keeping the top rows would just be the top rows within the table. So if I just say click the top 10, that's actually going to give me my top 10 um, customers, in this case, by, by sales volume. The last thing I'll demo here is not new, but I, I, I love demoing all the time, is column from examples. I just want to say, like, at least the, the entire, like, the flow operation, you know, like, that, that's just, it's, it's something that's absolutely, like, amazing. Like, because all these other things are, I would say, are either ads or incremental upgrades, but that's a complete interface redesign. Like, it's gone from a list to a flow, you know, uh, like, a, a, in a higher, you know, the, um, a dependency tree that, that, that uh, tracks all of that. That's and nice. I, you know, it, I, I love it, but it also it took me a little bit of time to, to have to reframe my brain around the, this new pattern of like, I click here instead of there and I go right instead of left. But it really does, I think, draw a map of the, the transformations. And especially for developers who, ha you know, very often they're like, here's a Power BI file that somebody, you, somebody had built. Um, they left the company and they didn't document it, but now you need to manage it. And there's like 20 things broken. It's, it's a lot easier to step in to one of those and to quickly kind of see, you know, are there any, um, you know, like where, where the problems might be and, and potentially any performance improvements. Uh, so I, I, it just gives you a much better snapshot uh, for like, a, even for a person looking at a query, query for the first time. That's exactly right. So it's all about uh, getting a better sense for the queries, um, understanding what others have done. Uh, also making it much more visual. You can also use this from scratch to author stuff as I, as I was showing during the demo. Uh, we still have a lot of work ahead of us to do to make it much more engaging and fun to work with, you know, things like drag and dropping transforms, drag and dropping maybe a, a file from somewhere else directly into the diagram view to add it to your workbook instead of having to go through the data experience um, and on and on. You know, uh, we have, uh, I like to joke, uh, not joke actually because it's real, uh, years and years if not decades of uh, backlog ahead of us with our query features. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you here is actually column by, by example. Uh, and I'm actually going to do a combination of data coming from the contact name and contact title columns. 
So let's say I wanted to do uh, the last name uh, of, uh, of one of my customers followed by a comma, uh, and I'm going to start doing that before I forget. So if I take this customer, Christopher Beck, I'm going to do the last name in uppercase, Beck, and then I'm going to type Christopher, and then I'm going to do uh, the contact title in parentheses, in this case, a yeah, finance manager. All right. And now if we do a second example uh, with uh, this row, for example, this is uh, my friend John Grande. So I'm going to type Grande, comma, John, and the sales manager. And with just a couple of examples, you now see how or maybe not because I didn't specify enough. Oh no, there you go. So now you see how all the other examples were automatically inferred to actually correspond to the name and last name and contact title from each of the other rows. If you look here on the top of the command bar, you get to see uh, the formula that got generated underneath. Uh, so actually Ray and I were talking before the live stream, just uh, making sure we had the right uh, screen set up and all that. And we we're talking a little bit about how even though he is a black belt and a ninja on, on Power Query and M, he, in many cases, would rather go use column by example to just do things in one shot real quick, generate the formula, and then maybe go and tweak the formula, but it's a big productivity boost for him. Exactly. I mean, it, it, you know, like, looking at that code, like, sure, you could, you could write that out yourself, but you know, that, that's, that's a lot of time versus just letting it generate that for you. I will say, like, as a note, don't get too comfortable with it and the fact that like every time you do something in there, take a minute to read what it actually scripted out just to like, oh, okay, yeah, that's good to know. So like it used that function, wrapped it around this and like that's how it achieved that. So like you can still use it as a learning opportunity uh, you know, and understand it without necessarily having to write it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, you know, by example, column by example is really a design time um, experience that ultimately generates one or more uh, steps uh, with transforms. In this case, it just generated a custom column. And you can always go and edit that and then see the underneath formula and then tweak it from here as well. Uh, or even delete it and then jump again into the experience uh, to provide new examples to regenerate the new, uh, uh, you know, a new transform uh, by example. So with that, uh, I know I didn't answer earlier the question about debugging issues because I wanted to wait until this point in the demo, which is to give you an overview of our newly introduced step folding indicators uh, that will give you information about whether a query was executed uh, by pushing down uh, to an underlying data source uh, or just compensated locally by the M engine behind Power Query. If we look at this example where I've pulled data from a couple of uh, SQL Server tables or Azure SQL database tables and then an Excel file and then a few joins, let's actually start from the beginning. I'm gonna go pick the uh, sales order uh, detail table. And here, look at what happened in the apply the steps. We now have these additional step indicators that tell me this step will be evaluated by the data source uh, with this green icon and then all of the subsequent steps. Uh, they're also executed in the underlying data source. Uh, the same will happen in the order header table um, because it was just coming out of SQL and we did a group by. Now let's get into a more interesting state. I actually picked the merge table where I did a, a merge, uh, a left order join between the, the two order tables. Uh, it's also folding end to end, as you can see. Uh, you can also right click and go into the view, the data source query. And that's actually gonna give you the full uh, SQL query underneath. And you can also go into the more advanced view to see the entire query plan. That is actually gonna give you not only the, the SQL database information, but actually the, uh, the native query that got executed. And this could be a much com more complex composition if I had pulled in many more additional uh, data sources and, and queries. Um, now, of course, if I move uh, through the other queries that actually involve a SQL server, uh, sorry, an Excel workbook, it's no longer gonna fall to SQL. Um, so in this case, as you can see in my merge one, it's all red. Uh, it's actually informing me that nothing, fall, uh, uh, nothing falls in this specific query. Uh, we're also uh, in the interest of making the diagram view easier to audit and uh, and then debug. We're bringing these step folding indicators into the main diagram view alongside the steps that you can see. Uh, so do keep that in mind as well. Um, so of course, this is not a full answer for uh, debugging and diagnosing issues. There's a, a whole aspect around uh, data flows, refresh failures, where you can actually drill through 
the uh, the underlying logs, uh, each of those being today CSV files that you can get through the refresh history uh, experience. Uh, that will give you uh, query level information for you know if any of your queries fail, uh, you actually get the 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 failure message for each of them, the error message for each of them within that Excel file. Um, so yeah, the, um, we also have a lot of uh, uh, best practices and diagnostics information in our help um, documentation. Yep. Um, we added a whole new help tab here to the query editor ribbon, as you can see, uh, with Power Query documentation being one of the options. And within this one, we have everything that you from what is Power Query, where can I use Power Query today, what are data flows, how to guide about the main areas, how to use Power Query, how to get data, how to transform data, to feature by feature examples. So if I go under transform data, you get to see transform tables and you get to see uh, information for each of the transforms that we provided there. So, for example, if I go to an operation like Unpivot, um, I'll get deep information about, okay, what is Unpivot? What is the before and after, you know, Unpivot being a hard to understand operation for many end users, right? Uh, giving them a visual representation of the before and the after shape of your data. Uh, and also explaining the different modes that we have, things like Unpivot columns, Unpivot other columns, Unpivot only selected columns, why would you use one versus the other? What are the main use cases? Uh, we have very deep documentation for not only Unpivot, but all the other features that you see here on the table of contents. And uh, we have a dedicated section entirely for data flows that also gives you from an overview of what data flows are, uh, everything that we were talking about earlier about um, standard data flows versus analytical data flows and uh, what are the output destinations? How do I consume the results from a data flow? That's all covered here. We also have a dedicated section for troubleshooting. Um, troubleshooting, uh, uh, you know, errors or challenges within the creation of a data flow, mm -hmm. and also um, connectivity to data sources. Um, we also have a section for best practices where we talk about developing complex data flows and some of the ideas that we were discussing earlier around uh, compute, uh, computer entities and uh, you know leveraging the SQL compute engine as a way to actually stage your data for more complex transformations later on. So those patterns are all explained here in much more detail. I, I didn't do them justice with just a one minute explanation earlier. Um, the other thing I wanted to point you at, uh, you probably know this already. Uh, we do provide uh, PowerQuery.com. PowerQuery.com is our uh, go-to place for all things Power Query across products. Here you can find information about all the integrations with different products. We also have a dedicated page to uh, talk resources. Currently the Microsoft uh, is built by us but also community resources, uh, which, uh, you know, arguably they're even better uh, than, than, than the ones we do at Microsoft and will always be just based on the expertise and the amount of talent that's out there in the community. Books, uh, forums, uh, you know, uh, public forums, blogs, blogs from many of our MVPs, uh, many YouTube channels, many, you know, sources of information here I recommend you to go and check out. Um, the last piece I want to talk is that a couple months ago we actually launch the Power Query team blog. And the idea here is that we centralize all of the Power Query related news into a single place. Um, of course, that doesn't mean we would not talk about these things within the Power, Query, the, the Power BI community or the Excel community and blogs, but we actually use a Power Query team blog to aggregate all of those, but also do deeper dive content on, on some areas. And also a quick note, we're actually hiring. Uh, so I recommend you to go check that out. If you're an engineer or a product manager, program manager, uh, please do check out our opportunities. Uh, with that, yeah, Reid, I'll turn it back to you. I've spoken a lot. I know we're coming at time, but uh, where do you want to take it from here? Well, I just wanted to mention, like, uh, you know, and even some of the comments, like, <clears throat> Microsoft has done a great job in the last 12 to 24 months of, of beefing up the documentation heavily. Power Query is a great example of that, where there was, like, you know, little light articles and things here and there. Some, sometimes they would be completely current. Sometimes they might have been a year old. Uh, but overall, like, the, the amount of, information for learning and consumption and especially now with the dedicated website for all this like there, yeah highly recommend checking out those learn, learning resources like you know I, it, it's to the point that i'll you know i'll candidly say like it, it's definitely put a, a bit of a dent in some power query trainings like advanced power query training still makes sense but like very basic light introductions just like power query 101 type stuff a lot of that nowadays is just covered with the content that they have um, on, on power query online which is good it, it leaves room for you know a heavy dive into the expert like M language writing, but for basic stuff, yeah, there's there's a lot of good free official like Microsoft content out there for this. 
But I was a couple of questions that I'm also going <laughs> to pop up onto here now that we have more of a broader um, room for Q&A. Um, I had one from Matthias that I will bring up in here. I mentioned it a little bit, but he was wanting to know why there was no improvement in the GA connector. Uh, with some of these, you know, and certainly from my experience with the Google Analytics connector being like something that I, I make for my app source report, like it, it, it's two companies you have to work with and also have compatibility with. It's not just the connector built from Microsoft. Google also has huge limitations on how much data can come out. They're also essentially the, the they choose how fast it can come out too because it's a free connector. And, you know, for the most part, my understanding is they limit it to a degree and they also sample it and a bunch of other stuff. And it, because they, they want to encourage people to, you know, use their Google Big Data platform and, you know, put their, their data into there and, you know, use their other tools. So um, that's my two cents, at least, of experiencing the, the uh, you know, the pain points of being the, uh, an app developer for that. But what are, what are some of your thoughts? Yeah, mostly along those lines. The, the one uh, good news I'll call out, actually, is that we are actively working on the upgrading our Google Analytics connector so it uses mm. the Google Analytics V4 APIs, which would provide... Yep. Some reliability, hopefully help with some of the performance challenges mm -hmm. that you're talking about, uh, Matthias. And also it would expose additional dimensions and measures that were not available in the previous versions of the API. I believe the uh, the four months of data is still a limitation. I I don't have enough details right now and see whether you can actually use paging and slicing to do multiple requests for different uh, subsets of a date dimension yep. that will allow you to get past that. I'm, I'm just uh, not sure uh, right now, um, but it's something that uh, we can connect offline later as well. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited for the new one to come out. Um, and thankfully, I've been talking to Teddy and a few others, and like it sounds like there will be both. Like There will still be the legacy connector, but there will also be a newer one to connect to. So it's not just going to kill um, all of the you know, existing reports that are using the current gen, right, right. I guess previous gen connector today. Yeah, it's uh, the 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 API version will be an advanced option within the connector experience. Uh, existing connections and existing queries will continue to work as is. For newly created ones, we would start defaulting to the new API uh, in yep. a few months. Uh, this is still not in market, but it's something that we plan to release around October. All right, I'm I'm excited for that. Like probably the number one issue, certainly with mine, is the the the, the real limitation for the export or the fact that it takes you know to get like one million rows, it takes about half an hour to refresh because it. You know, they, they have to process and sample and spit it all out. Um, so look, looking forward to the new connector coming out for that. And get this off. Um, another one, here we go, one from uh, Michael earlier. What happened to Excel Power Query connecting to native Power BI data so, uh, flows? Will we see this at some point? Uh, yes. So uh, I, maybe I moved uh, quickly through that, but when we were talking about the data flows connector and the, the unification into the single data flows connector instead of a Power BI and Power Platform data flows connector that exists today, I also mentioned that we're bringing that unified data flows connector into Excel mm. over the next two to three months. Okay. Yeah. So it's on the short list and that's perfect. All right. Yeah. We, we know this was a huge request for many of you. So we're super excited about it. And uh, of course, that doesn't mean that is the, you know, it's only the beginning of the road. We'll continue improving the connector from there. So do keep the feedback coming. Perfect. And with anything, yeah, like the anything Microsoft related, the, the community feedback really pumps in features and, and support and shows you guys certainly like what people care about, which is sometimes you can kind of guess and other times like I never thought this would have been such a an important issue to the community, but you know, clearly it is. So maybe we dedicate some more resources to making X thing possible. Um, Donald had a great question. A Power Query in Azure Data Factory is much too incompatible with other Power Query data flows to use for most ETL work. Do you see a situation, this situation is getting better so I can use Power Query everywhere? Right, that's a great question, Donald. So to, to recap today, uh, the integration of Power Query within Azure Data Factory allows users to transform data that, is, that has been already been ingest, ingested um, uh, through the Azure Data Factory connectors. So think about there as Power Query as only a design time experience that generates M code for data transformations. Uh, and that M code gets translated to a Spark uh, to run at scale within Azure Data Factory. What we're working on towards is uh, providing full parity of capabilities in terms of connectors, but also transformations, providing the ability to fall back to the use of the M engine for those transformations where uh, Spark uh, is not available as a translation, but also the connector capabilities as part of it. So really, you know, the the the, the success goal there, you know, the North Star is, hey, can I actually do things with the simplicity and ease of use of Power Query, but the scale of Azure Data Factory is really where we're headed. 
Yeah, and then, and then get, just getting the parity between everything, right? Exactly. All right. Uh, Donald was happy with that question uh, answer. Have a couple left. Um, Vio had a question about: Is there a way to connect Power Query to a Power Pivot model in Excel? As I understand, it's it. You know, he's correct. It's an analysis services model. Um, in my like at least quick two cents is it. It's more difficult to con connect to and extract a, a data from a compressed engine versus most other relational databases where it's you're just connecting to the tables themselves. Um, so like that that would be my assumption of probably why it's not been a normal connector. Same thing with you can can't really connect to a Power BI data set to extract a single entity out of it. You can just connect to it via you know a live or direct query connection. Yeah, that's right. We don't have any out of the box connector to uh, to an Excel data model. Yeah, I know there are some hacks out there and some blog posts that you can read out for how to do it. Uh, it's not something, uh, at least from a Power Query Connector perspective, we, we officially support. Well, and at that point, it, it's almost uh, potentially a cause for data flow. Because typically speaking, the reason you would want to connect into a tabular model rather than the source data, the tabular model is doing some type of transformation that you want to leverage rather than having to do said transformation again. Because otherwise you could just copy and paste the query out of the, that model into the other one. But now you're, you're duplicating the, the query transformations potentially against the data source. But if you have two different models that need to do that, potentially you know, have a data flow or some other type of entity where that tra or Azure Data Factory, that transformation is done at a core location, that transform table is now accessible both by the Power Pivot model and whatever else you're connecting to. Um, but usually there's a way to, to, to um, to, pu to push that uh, upstream, so to speak. All right. Last question that I had for another one from Matthias. Uh, wants to know how to differentiate between M and other languages like Python. Is M the language for users and under the hood is what Java, Python? Oh, got it. Uh, yeah, it took me a little bit to parse the second part of the question. No Think worries. about M as the... Uh, really the, 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 the intermediate language for data, the lingua franca for data. Um, and that includes data connectivity and data transformations. We put a lot of emphasis on the readability of the language. Uh, it's almost like you can read line by line and it's almost like a narrative of what your, mm -hmm. uh, your, your query is doing. Um, behind the scenes, AM is actually implemented in C Sharp uh, by, by and large. Um, uh, we also, you know, the design pattern for the language and the design principles made it a fully functional language, lazily evaluated. Uh, it's very similar to the Excel formula language. Uh, we modeled it after the Excel formula language since, as we said earlier, you know, Excel is where Power Query started, right? Uh, yep. uh, so that's, that explained a big part of the difference there. But now, uh, while we think it can actually grow to other uh, more advanced scenarios, uh, we don't think it's, uh, you know, a, a replacement for Python or, you know, a replacement <laughs> for Java or anything else. If it was, it wouldn't include Python as a scripting language in there, you know, for granted, it's for like column uh, level transformations mostly, uh, but you know, it, it, they, mm -hmm. they serve different purposes and, and uh, are very much built for entirely different um, uh, outputs. For from, some yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, I have one left. Uh, here we go, one from Mark and I'll pop up onto the screen. Uh, is there a way to include data flows in Power BI desktop from external workspaces that you're a contributor admin of? Um, example, Azure uh, AD or B2B guest? Got it. So the question is about being able to consume data flows uh, in Power BI desktop from a workspace that you're a contributor of. Um, yeah. So essentially, you're, you're publishing to tenant A, but you are an admin of tenant uh, B, and you want to be able to pull in the uh, the data flow from there as like a, almost like a linked entity in a, in a sense and then still be able to publish that and in the service it can reach across to the other tenant and pull in the data from there got it, got it. so i'm actually not uh fully up to speed on this area i will have to double check with other folks on the team mm -hmm. um but yeah it's a good feedback i've, I've heard this question a couple of times but i don't know the answer yeah no, I, I, it's one of those where i'm anytime you, you have to go between tenants i'm sure the security considerations are somewhat immense <laughs> for that especially because it requires in a sense two different logins to to, uh, to those to be able to, to kind of manage both so um if you want as well it, let me know about that and then i can i can post a comment uh later on about this perfect um otherwise i think that was about it for questions it looks like our 
I think our peak viewership was, let me check. We had upwards of, uh, oh yeah, cool. Yeah, it was about 40, 40 viewers that we had um, at its peak. So mm-hmm. lots of good attendance today. People, uh, my, th- my, my sense of involvement is usually the number of questions that get asked because you know, there, there's sometimes where people are just there to enjoy it. And this one had a nice long series of questions for that the thing and a lot of conversation. So I think we, people were really vibing very much on a lot of the stuff related to Power Query uh, and just your involvement with it. Uh, I, I've found that people really enjoy being able to kind of see the other half of the court and uh, and hear perspectives from people who actually are on the, you know, part of the engineering teams or anything else related to, um, to Power Query. The one thing that I, I will bring up, because it, it's now been announced on Twitter and everything else, um, but we're, you're, you're getting another Miguel that is going to be on, on the team. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's who, uh, right. Um, we, we have Miguel Escobar uh, is joining uh, my PM team, uh, hopefully uh, soon, in a few weeks, hopefully. Uh, yeah, and actually, uh, I didn't mention it, but a big part of the documentation updates over the last year is something that he worked on um, with us uh, as an external contributor. Um, so it was yeah, pretty amazing to see he's done such an amazing job in the community uh, for the last several years. And uh, now uh, you guys can actually um, back him with a feature ask as well for Power Query. The number one thing that I, I saw, like, jokingly from a few of, uh, of the colleagues of his is, you know, like, all right, like, step one. Fix IntelliSense. <laughs> Optimize See, that. Them. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that, I know that one's going to be a large project and undertaking. But I, I think it's really cool that, you know, that with Chris Webb as an example last year, there's been a few MVPs um, that have uh, transitioned from, you know, external consulting into the, the Power Query team. And Miguel has been very paramount in, in a lot of the documentation. Um, one of the biggest voices with Power Query in, in both in training, he's written books and and you know, that is not going to be helping the team. So I, I think that's a, a really is going to add a lot of value to to your team going forward. So I'm, I'm happy to hear he's he's joined on for that. Yeah, it'll be a pleasure. Perfect. Um, but otherwise, Miguel, I want to thank you so much uh, for your time. Everybody else um, as, as well as just thanking, thanking you for your time and effort today. This has been great. And with any of these, I always love just learning little, uh, little new things. And certainly with Power Query Online, I don't, Get nearly enough time to ever spend uh, in that versus desktop, but I'm very much looking forward to the next, uh, you know, six to twelve months where the the parity between desktop and that uh, gets updated because there's just so many cool new features coming out for it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Ray, for uh, inviting me, and thanks everyone for joining. And uh, again, uh, we're here to make uh, your life with data easier, uh, no matter which product you're using Power Query in today and uh, bring as much innovation we can to to all of you to make you more productive and successful. So do keep the feedback coming and uh, we'll stay engaged through many community forums as well going forward. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, and have a great weekend. You too, bye. (laughs) Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And if you want to help support this channel, take a look at our channel memberships as well. And last but not least, please consider sharing this video on social media to help pass on this awesome content and to help the channel grow. So until next time.